What's good nights, good night gaming here, and today we are back with another video, and this time we are going to be talking about the 2023 Game of the Year nominee, Spider-Man 2. Now, a lot of you might know me from my Batman Arkham videos and stuff like that, but as you might not know, I am a huge fan of Marvel Comics and Spider-Man. Could you tell? I even have my 19 inches of glorious them boy right here. But yes, we are talking about Spider-Man 2, and I was such a big fan of the first Spider-Man, and I believe Insomniac struck gold for the first time trying the character and not only that, they did it again with Spider-Man Miles Morales back in 2020. So they had big shoes to fill, had to make it bigger, badder than ever with the release of Spider-Man 2. And as of last month, I can say, they did not disappoint. Let's start with the most integral part about being Spider-Man, and that is the traversal and gameplay. Right away, swing is improved so much more than Spider-Man 1, with being so much faster, and you can use upgrades along the way as you progress through the game to speed it up even more, as well as using a skill tree to add variety to your swinging and style, like the loop-de-loop -loop and the corner tether. And let me tell you, I will spam that loop-de-loop -loop like it's the end of a Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie, because goddamn, is it fun as hell. Of course, there's still tricks you can do and most of them relatively stay the same but there are a few new animations my favorite is this rubik's cube one and as if swinging wasn't fun enough they added the inclusion of web wings i'm so glad they added this especially with the vast addition of queens and brooklyn's to the city it just helps you maintain speed for such far distances and flow so well together with the swinging it's like if you were playing arkham batman but arkham batman had web shooters the combat flows really well as expected, but we don't really see any major changes. We do get the addition of the parry mechanic, which is really cool. I felt like I was playing God of War. We don't see the gadget wheel return from the last game, which I thought was really cool. It gave you a minute to slow down time and then choose your gadget, but we get limited to about four gadgets in this game for each character, which I don't mind at all. It actually gives you a chance to think more quick on your feet. So in that case, it does flow better, but each character does have four unique abilities that that they can use Peter's abilities mainly dealing with his mechanical arms that come out of his back and Miles of course using his bioelectricity as the game progresses you do get more abilities but you only have those four slots to kind of pick and choose what you want so it gives you a little bit of freedom to choose how you want your play style to be I actually prefer Miles abilities more they just feel like they're doing so much more damage and they're awesome to look at Peter's mechanical arms are fine there's about one or two cool moves he does get an upgrade later these abilities can even help you traverse across the city adding a jump and a dash for each character but if you really don't feel like traversing across the city they do have a fast travel mechanic which does let you fast travel anywhere on the map and it does it so seamlessly it doesn't take any time to load at all really letting you feel the exaggerated swagger of an unemployed white male just based on the traversal alone and with the inclusion of web wings and just how much faster and variety there is i don't ever see myself going back to the original spider-man <laughs> going back just feels so much slower don't get me wrong the traversal in spider-man 2018 was fucking awesome for its time it's the best web swing we had up to that point but this game shits on that you also have the ability to seamlessly switch in between peter and miles kind of like in gta 5 but again much faster i also love the fact that you could go do a random crime and then you could see peter or miles jump in with you it just makes the world feel more alive as well as if you progress through the game at certain points, you can see other characters from the story hop in and help you as well. I do wish we had that Arkham style mechanic where you could switch in between each character while you're fighting. I don't know, maybe they were thinking about it and they just couldn't find a way to do it, but I feel like it would have enhanced this game a lot more. There weren't really a lot of glitches I encountered, but there's definitely a little bit more than expected. And let's not forget a week after launch, Spider-Man could just randomly turn into a white cube. Rest in peace, Spider-Cube. Overall, I think the gameplay, combat, traversal, everything like that is top tier. Hopefully they advance even further in the next game. I do think they could take some tips from the Arkham series, especially like I said before with the dual team stuff, especially the stealth stuff. We didn't really get too much of an improvement on that. It mostly stays the same besides the addition of web lines, which I do think are cool. Of course, in this game, we get an assortment of skins we can use on Peter and Miles. And let me tell you, some of them are bangers. And then there are some that are fucking trash. Like, what the fuck is this, man? Some skins are just not 
it. I spent a whole lot of time completing those EMF side missions, and this was my fucking reward? Fuck you, Harry. But that being said, when Insomniac makes good suits, boy, do they make some awesome suits. Of course, the classic Raimi suit returns, but we get a symbiote variation with it. Miles gets some awesome movie and comic suits, and I love this Wolverine-inspired suit. I cannot tell you how much of a slut I am for this classic symbiote suit with the red and blue lights from the animated series. It is literally the perfect suit, and I cannot wait for New Game Plus to come out so I can use it in all the cutscenes. Most of the suits do come in extra styles, and it's nice to have that variation because you might not like how a particular suit looks, but it does have some really cool styles that you might resonate more with. You can never go wrong with a classic red and black Spidey look, but if you want to go more outlandish and have fucking web man, then you can do that too. Miles evolved suit that you get near the end of the game. Everyone has their opinions on this suit. I don't hate it. You know, I'm fine with it. There are a couple problems that I would fix. Like those shoes are horrendously ugly and out of place. I don't mind the blue coloring i kind of like it how it seems like it says bioelectricity flowing through the suit but i do see some complaints about people comparing it to colgate maybe they could just change it back to red and black keep the same suit get rid of those shoes maybe put the hood up so it's not as easy to tell who the fuck he is but yeah i don't hate it as much as other people do but i definitely do think it needs a change in spider-man 3. all right let's get into the nitty gritty of spider-man 2 and that is the story right away i'll say i love Peter and Miles dynamic in this right off the bat. It no longer feels like a mentor and student kind of thing. It feels like they're both peers and on par with each other. And the banter and the teamwork together just really works well. And it's actually fun to see two Spider-Man working together that doesn't involve the Spider-Verse. Of course, you get the returning support characters like Rio, Miles' mom, Genki, Haley, and MJ. And I love how they all interact with each other. It's not like Peter has his party and Miles has his respective party and they just don't interact with each other. A lot of the time you'll get MJ interacting with Miles and Genki interacting with Peter. I will say this is one of my favorite Mary Jane and Peter relationships in Spider-Man media. I don't know why, but I feel like in the movies and the comics, there's just an underlying sense of hate. So it's nice to not see them have that. Of course, Harry's in the game like T's in the last one. And again, I love this relationship that they build up between Peter and Harry. It actually feels like they have a brotherly friendship bond. And the game likes to bring the pacing and slow it down a little bit have these moments where they're having flashbacks or maybe they're just hanging out and i think the game does a great job of balancing these slow moments with fast action high paced set pieces later on like you only get these big payoffs if you take the time to really develop these characters and these relationships so i do appreciate that and of course let's not forget our two big main villains of the game that being craven and venom craven starts appearing very early on and he's kind of this over shadowing present that just lays in the background building up to what his plans actually are immediately taking control of the situation he's in he has such a powerful presence and the music that plays when he enters is just damn fine Very early on, he starts breaking villains out of prison like Scorpion and Mr. Negative, and he's trying to capture others like Black Cat. And slowly but surely, you start learning that he's not breaking these villains out to try and make a team to fight Spider-Man. No, he's breaking these villains out because he just wants to fight them. And they do such a good job of just showing how dangerous he is straight up killing scorpion with his own tail like it's nothing and let me tell you this dude has some fucking bars there are no good men only good prey i see a man i sense a beast who knew the dad from Victorious had that dog in him? Overall, he's an amazing villain, and I'm finally glad he gets the spotlight he deserves, showcasing how badass he is. No, don't even point to that stupid fucking Craven movie that's coming out next year. I do wish we did see a bit more hunting, because we do learn that he kills Vulture and Shocker, but we never get to see it happen. We only see their gear propped up at his camp, along with an audio recording describing how he did it. Plus, we but not enough. 
And while his dialogue is very cool, I still wish that we could have seen it happen, especially since this game is shorter than the first one. So if they really wanted to add some more runtime, then fucking show us him doing some crazy shit to kill the vulture. We mostly just see his hunters going around, trying to mess everything up. And let me tell you, listen, I hate these guys. And I don't know if that's the point to get annoyed with them, but there is just so goddamn many that after a certain point, I'm just like, are, are we done yet and my last little gripe about craven is that he has a great motivation for what he does why he hunts people is because he is sick so he doesn't want some disease taking him out he wants to go out fighting and wants to find someone to give him that warrior's death yes it is a great motivation for a villain but one that's not really focused on a whole lot you do get one hint in the game and then when the boss fight happens later peter does talk to him about you're just a sick and dying old man your followers treat you like some kind of god you're just a dying old man looking for a way out so you know then then you know i will not die in a secret but that's it I definitely feel like they could have dove a little deeper into that. But again, there's no major problems with Craven as a character. These are all little nitpicks I'm pointing out. And they did a spectacular job of adapting Craven into this game and making him just a genuine badass. His boss fight was as visceral as I expected. He goes invisible, he throws smoke bombs, he throws shit at you, he's fast as shit. So he genuinely did deliver and exceed my expectations. Now for the big boy. Good old 19 inches of venom. I think it was pretty obvious and ever Everyone pretty much knew that Harry was gonna be Venom by the end of the game. Thankfully, his fall from grace is actually believable. I thought we were just gonna get some half-baked arc to the dark side. Or even worse, James Franco fucking touching his stupid lips in Spider-Man 3. Strawberries. But no, it was actually genuinely believable. And I like the fact that it was Peter being a dick that made Harry angry enough for the symbiote to attach to him. And actually, before we we get into full-on Venom discussion, let's talk about this symbiote itself. It attaches onto Peter after this awesome fucking set piece, and right away when it goes onto him, you unlock these symbiote abilities and symbiote surge, and the gameplay for that is just out of the park you can feel the rumblings in the controller and just how much more visceral and aggressive it is compared to peter's usual fighting style he's like slamming people against the wall he's putting them up he's slamming them down and he's talking so much shit during it it's so good how does he live get your boss needs better aim and i feel sorry for him Holy shit. But besides those little surge moments, progressively throughout the game, he becomes more and more of a dickhead. Not really calling Miles for help and kind of pushing him off to the sidelines. Not caring at all in the world what MJ has to say. He could give less of a shit that his friend is dying without the suit. When Miles gets kidnapped and his mom calls Peter to find out what's going on, he straight up scoffs at her while she's talking. Peter, where is Miles? He didn't come home last night and he's not answering my call. <sighs> Hello? And I love the slow buildup of Venom's speech and thoughts entering into Peter's regular speech and thoughts. Like there's a part where Peter falls asleep and is being controlled by the symbiote while he's asleep. And it's not even remotely close to Peter. That is a little infant Venom wanting to kill people. It even turns into like this horror game where you're playing as MJ and you're trying to track down Peter and help him out. I think the most vile thing he says in this game which honestly, understandable why Harry just starts to turn after this. This suit is the only reason I'm still alive. Yeah, it's pretty great, isn't it? Why don't you pop some more pills and say what you really feel? Hey! Jesus Christ, dude! Your best friend is dying and the best you have to tell him is to pop more pills? I thought we couldn't get more maniacal than Tobey Maguire playing on the piano while saying, Now dig on this. Even destroys part of the city just trying to chase the lizard. Which again, just shows a high level of disrespect to. No wonder your family left you. Now dig on this. Eventually it all culminates and you end up having to fight Peter as Miles. And it's such a great boss fight. Not only do you have to fight one of the title heroes of the game, the emotion, the intensity, all the buildup leading to this moment is just superb, especially the music. I can't let this go. I'm finally everything everyone needs me to be. Yeah, 
You don't even answer my calls anymore, man. And I think it's great that Miles is the one to snap him back into reality and help get the suit off of him, showing just how strong their bond is and the willingness to help from going too far off the deep end. But yes, he was a dick to everyone, and eventually Miles gets the suit off and he brings the suit to Oscorp to where Harry gets angry and the symbiote latches onto him like a magnet. And what better way to showcase? the sheer destruction and the power of venom then letting you play as him when i saw that prompt to attack for the first time i was blown away i could not genuinely believe insomniac made everyone's wish come true with this one moment of course we all wanted to play as venom but nobody expected it we were just like yeah he's just gonna be the main villain and that'll be cool that'll be it but no you get to feel the power you're absolutely wiping the floor with these guys you're running through oscorp tearing down doors and walls and everything you're grabbing rockets and shooting them back at people. You can pick dudes up and beat other dudes with them, as well as the takedown attacks being visceral as all hell. Just straight up biting dudes. It makes you feel so unstoppable and it builds up in such a short amount of time, I might add, of just how dangerous Venom is. And uh, Insomniac just give us like an extra game mode add mission replayability as soon as possible because oh my god i would pay 70 dollars for a game that's just this section alone then he eventually breaks out of oz corp and then we get a craven boss fight as venom do you understand how crazy this is and of course craven ain't shit you beat him so easily and then venom finishes him off in the most brutal of ways cannot stress enough how perfect of a section this is in such a short amount of time you build up a villain you take the other villain that we've spent the majority of the game with and so such a transition of power to one another it's so flawless just take a second to praise insomniac for doing something like this just so wonderful and such a great display of storytelling and such fun gameplay all wrapped into one this is one of the most perfect segments in a video game ever and i just want to take a second to praise insomniac on some of the smaller gameplay moments that aren't like traditional gameplay they kind of go out of the box a little bit like they took the time to add these bicycle riding mechanics or you're fucking shooting hoops i thought this carnival segment was really cool and fun you do get some cool emf stuff with the bees and they could have easily made this stuff like cutscenes and everything but i feel like they wanted to get you on hands with the controller as much as possible and i do appreciate that they did that there's even a section where you have to chase black cat through manhattan and you're thinking it's gonna be a usual chase but no she pulls out a mcguffin that lets her teleport around using dr strange-esque portals and it is so fun i feel like they were like how do we take the usual chase scene and amp it up a bit you know so it doesn't feel like the same old black cat chase and they did a spectacular job you can swing through these portals it gives an awesome visual at one point you can swing through what looks like antarctica and then you get to fight alongside her later on and it makes for awesome gameplay and takedowns and just a perfect section um i will not forgive them for adding these stupid fucking puzzles i don't like them i didn't like what they did in the last game with the puzzles and i don't know why they would attempt to do it again but it's sonic listen next game stop with the puzzles i'm done while we're talking about gameplay moments through the story i feel like we should touch on the mj sections which as you know in the first game were just not good they really slowed down the pace of the first game and killed the momentum and they were just honestly really boring and they added them back into this game and honestly they are a little bit better they're more fast paced and they actually give mj something to do besides just walking around and there's not very many of them compared to the first game they do add variety like giving you a taser that later gets upgraded into a web shooter or with concussion blasts and you know what? i don't actually mind the mj missions this time around i do get a little bit irritated where if i'm in a big area like craven's base and i am really far along and i end up dying i end up going back all the way to the other side of the map where the checkpoint was that can really kill the momentum a little bit i guess it gives you incentive not to die but i think I think it does give us one of the best moments like i mentioned earlier with hunting down peter and it turning into a horror game MJ. 
God damn. But I've heard a lot of different takes on it. Personally, I think they're going the right direction with it. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of these sections. We do see a lot of other villains in this game, like Lizard, Mr. Negative, Boomstone. But the thing is, with the majority of the villains, we actually spend a lot of time helping them out and saving them. Some of them are actually reform. And I love this theme throughout the game that they keep bringing up is second chances. Part of the job of being Spider-Man is believing that people can change and hoping that when you throw them in prison, maybe they have a different mindset and come out a better person. And I love the fact that they touch on this and allows for such a deeper and more intriguing story. One thing I was very happy about is that they revisited the relationship between Martin Lee and Miles Morales. I thought that this was something that they were gonna bring up again but i'm so happy that they did of course martin lee killing miles dad in the last game how you can see that miles is still clearly distraught of what mr negative did he even hesitates actually saving him at one point even letting rage consume him so much that he neglects to save citizens from dying but i love the growth between the two characters and the arc we have they end up having to fight each other at craven's arena at one point and he has this kind of shift in personality afterwards the miles with all of his pent-up rage could have easily finished martin off right here but of course Course, like the theme of the game he ends up giving him a second chance and they have this great moment later on where miles says i won't forgive you it's just not in me but i can't carry this hate for you anymore man and they end up working together to save peter parker actually giving us one of the most unexpected moments with the anti-venom suit thank god they gave us the anti-venom suit i know a lot of people after the symbiote got taken away were wishing they had those symbiote abilities back so it's nice that they actually gave us them back in a way that made sense to the story and it looks absolutely beautiful in fact there are a lot of moments in this game that were truly unexpected and i didn't think that they would manage a way to pull it off like we didn't even know sandman was in the game until like a couple days before launch and it gave us one hell of an introduction in boss fight after harry's revealed to have the symbiote i was not expecting him to pull up with the agent venom gear i am jealous of that suit because i wish that was a skin in the game because it just looks so good another moment is venom straight up taking mary jane and turning her into scream i could not believe my eyes like it's amazing how they pulled so many elements from the comic books and just fit it into one concise comprehensive story like this and i absolutely love this boss fight with scream <laughs> you're just beating the shit out of symbiote mj in the middle of a street outside may's house it's very fun albeit the dialogue can get a little cheesy you can't keep a job you can't pay the mortgage but I feel like there's a lot of moments in this story that you can only get in video games. Like the set pieces are just so massive that you can never get this shit in movies. One of the best sections in the game that's not the Venom gameplay is the lizard boss fight that turns into a chase scene that turns into another boss fight. The boss fight itself is fun, but then he starts going into the street and ripping through buildings, running through hunters' cars, dragging the cars up the building, smashing back through the ground finishing the boss fight it's just an amazing moment one of many i'll add and enough of that let's get into more so the end and third act of the game after he gets the anti-venom suit i really love the web of shadows kind of influence here with all these symbiote creatures that are actually civilians for the most part they're fun to fight and if you're using pete's anti-venom abilities it actually does more damage to a symbiote which i think is a really cool detail continuing with the web of shadows influence venom straight up turns the city into symbiote goo again insomniac just doing the most with these set pieces that they can even if they're in the game for just a brief amount of time the final mission of the game with the main three working together as you switch in between each one is really cool and when we do get to the venom boss fight he does prove a little difficult yet very fun i love that the boss arena is their old school raised up into multiple sections it just makes it really fun to swing across and then if this man wasn't dangerous enough he grows fucking wings he looks so monstrous and it's 
awesome. And then you have to fight him as Miles while he's flying up in the air. And it's so cool to just use air combat during a boss fight. And then the final little section where we get this long ass cutscene where you're just mashing buttons and they're both beating the shit out of Venom. So cool. And there's just no other way to phrase it besides just pure awesomeness. I am glad that Harry didn't die after all of that because I was expecting him to bite the dust, but I feel like it would have been too similar to the end of Spider-Man 1 with May's death. So I'm glad he does get to kind of live on. I also love how caring of a father Norman actually is. You actually feel for the guy. And then when he throws that tantrum at the end of the game, my heart kind of breaks for him. And it's a perfect setup for Green Goblin in the third game. And it's great motivation. Get the G serum ready. And the game ends with this kind of passing of the torch from Peter to Miles as kind of the mainline Spider-Man. And Insomniac themselves have said that Miles Morales is the main Spider-Man going forward. I know a lot of people are upset about that and I can understand it, but I think Insomniac are kind of phrasing it the wrong way as if Peter won't be in the next Spider-Man game, which is obviously untrue. If Green Goblin is the main villain of the next game, then Peter obviously has to be the one to take him on because he's his arch nemesis. And I do like this passing of the torch, albeit it does feel a little bit early to do it. It's only the second game. I feel like this is something that should have been saved at the third game. We'll have to see what they do with it. It's nice to actually see Peter get to live his life for a while. And I think that's kind of the direction they're going with it. He's just taking a little break. We do get two post credit scenes, one with Norman Osborn visiting Dr. Octavius in the raft, teasing what is to be the final chapter. And it seems like they're only doing three games which i think is good just keep it to three and then stop but then we get another post credit scene where miles finally gets with Haley, and we get the reveal of the next spider person coming which is cindy moon which i am so excited about i'm glad that the next spider person is cindy moon i'm glad that they didn't do gwen stacy because i feel like we've seen a lot of that in spider-man media so it's nice and refreshing to see cindy moon actually get her time in the spotlight i don't know if she'll get her own spin-off game like miles but i'm I'm very excited to see what they do with her next. Such a great story, obviously shorter than the first game, but I feel like they told the story they wanted to tell and they did it so well. Again, only a few nitpicks around, but I didn't even mention how phenomenal the voice acting and the motion capture is. The emotion and range these guys bring to the table is spectacular. Tony Todd as Venom is the greatest casting someone has ever done. We're going to kill the world. And again, Yuri Lowenthal kills it as Peter Parker always. Peter Parker's face model, I actually like it this time around. Back when they remastered the first Spider-Man and they changed his face entirely, I was not messing with it. I didn't like it at all, but I feel like they did something in this game. I don't know what. I actually think it fits more than the first face and it does work better. The truth is, I'm the hero here, not you. When it comes to side quests, there's not as many as there were in the first game, and I actually think that's a huge benefit, because in the first game there were a lot, and at a certain point it just became more of a task than having fun. Thankfully, majority of the side quests in this game are genuinely fun, and they actually relate to the main story a lot. Some of my favorites are the Marco memory crystals and the Mysteriums. With Marco's memories, you just have to piece them together, and you figure out what events led up to the opening of the game when Sandman was attacking the city. It's very sweet, it involves his daughter. Then there are the Mysteriums around the city, which I actually thought were going to be annoying, but after playing them, they're actually pretty fun. They're not like the fucking screwball missions. It leads to this cool fake Mysterio boss fight. I do like both those because they tie into the main story and the theme of second chances and seeing the villains reformed. And then, of course, there are the flame side missions where we see Yuri from the first game take on the alter ego of Wraith. Very cool to see their dynamic again after so long with her wanting to harmonize and these bad guys and then spider-man of course he doesn't want to kill anyone but i think the coolest thing about this side mission is that you do get a tease to cletus cassidy carnage making me really wonder what the hell's gonna happen in the next game <laughs> then you got some smaller ones like the photo ops which are always really interesting to see and some of them are funny i really love the bodega cats his company copied us because everyone loved how cute spider-man i mean i i was am i'm that i am we were first well 
I don't know anything about that. As well as the Prowler hideouts. This one wasn't really fun per se. You just go around the city, find different Prowler hideouts as Miles. You do get a nice cutscene at the end where Uncle Aaron is moving up to the apartment upstairs from Miles. But they give you a tech upgrade afterwards where your first hit after being invisible is really strong. After completing almost the entire game, I just had no use for it. And of course, there are the few Craven hideouts that are left around the city that you have to go and clean up, which I found myself having a good time with. I'd say the only side missions that I found getting really repetitive are the hunter drones, which you just chase a drone around the city. And the gameplay itself is not really that interesting, but they do add story to it that keeps you engaged and eventually leading to the reveal of the chameleon, which I'm sure he'll be back in the next game. The symbiote nests are just you fight off symbiotes for two to three minutes and then you're done and the nest is gone, which is fun for a little bit. I I'd recommend that you just space out the nests in between other side quests and stuff. But one of the most fun fun and intriguing collectibles in this game are the spider bots and right away you can tell this is something to do with the spider-verse because they pulse off this kind of spider-verse glitch effect and the spider bot designs are actually very cool the way Genki pops up and talks to spider-man regarding these spider bots made me just want to keep playing and keep finding them this third party ping is coming from far away like millions of miles far and it comes with a great payoff where you find a character from the spider-verse they actually do reference miguel really cool stuff i don't know if this has any implications for the future if spider-verse will be more involved in the next game but if it's not and this was just a fun little thing i'm still happy very cool to see there are a few miles centric side missions and i'll be honest most of the ones regarding the brooklyn visions quests i didn't care about a lot of them were lame you don't really do a whole lot it's just students asking you if you can help them with stupid shit i did like the cultural museum side quests where miles has to retrieve the instruments for a local museum i thought it was very interesting as well as a good showcase for how miles always still has time for his community i almost forgot to mention the emf stations that are set up around the city some of them are cool again don't fucking like the puzzles but it does have a heart touching moment with harry after you complete all the side missions and i thought that was a nice touch but what surprised me is the best side missions in this game are really focused on the people of new york these side missions are just friendly neighborhood app requests and they see you dealing with very simple stuff but the story and the characters the civilians they just make it just a nice and wholesome experience i think the two main ones that everyone points to will be the Howard mission or Howard from the past two games that you've been helping catch his birds wants you to set them free it's very sad he talks about his wife and everything like that I worked in that factory for 20 years laid off lost my purpose for a while and then when my wife passed I lost my heart to but my birds he taught me how to fly again. I didn't know I could care this much for a character that's not in the main story or in any cutscenes. The next one everyone likes to talk about is the grandpa mission, where you have to help this lady find her grandpa. And after you do find him, you just sit on a bench and he tells you his story about how he fell in love with this lady. Again, very heartwarming. I was so nervous that day, Spider-Man. Almost didn't even ask. It's like I blinked. And she's gone. It really showcases that this is what Spider-Man's all about. He doesn't always just have to be fighting crime and saving the day and high-paced action. This is where the friendly neighborhood part comes in. Just sitting down, hearing people's story, helping out with the little stuff. One that I liked a lot and was really surprised by is one where you get to play as Haley and you go around covering up people's graffitis with her own art. When you're playing as her because she's deaf, you don't hear any sound all you can feel is the controller rumblings and it's cool to see her perspective of other people's emotions and i think it's another showcase of insomniac taking the time to craft something that really wasn't expected or they didn't really need to but they went that extra step and they gave us this really cool mission but yeah overall the side missions most of them good some of them again not the best but still i think way better than the last game so that's everything spider-man 2 has to offer i know i probably missed out on some stuff and honestly i could keep talking about 
about this game forever. But if I had to simplify it into one small statement, Spider-Man 2 not only lives up to its predecessor, but completely demolishes it with its advancements in traversal, the side quests, and its incredible high action story. And does it deserve to be game of the year? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's a tough question because there are a lot of great games that came out this year, and it does have some wonderful nominees alongside it. Me personally, I don't think it'll win, but if it does, you won't hear any complaints from me. I don't know what Insomniac's plans are, whether there's going to be a DLC or another spin-off game, or they're just going to start working on the third one. I don't know, but whatever it is, I'm very excited and hopeful for the future. If I had to throw my two cents on the development of the next game, it's really focus on evolving combat a lot more because we know they can deliver a great story. So I kind of want to see some more changes to that gameplay area as well as fine tuning some of the side quests that are put in there. But again, overall incredible game. I had a blast playing through it. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you like Spider-Man 2? Do you not like Spider-Man 2? Do you think it deserves to win game of the year? Let me know all of that stuff. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Maybe think about subscribing. I got a lot of ideas for other videos planned out for the future. Arkham Origins will definitely be the next game I do a retrospective on since you guys like the Arkham City video so much. There's a chance I might post a reaction to the game rewards depending on what's there, but we'll see. I've been Good Night Gaming. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Take care. Peace.